Proudly we hail. And now another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, thank you, Ken Banghart. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Our program is an adventure story with an intriguing twist and a surprise ending. I'll be back after a few words from Ken. A few words leave, but very important, and especially addressed to the young men and young women of America. The Army and the Air Force want to meet their manpower needs with the greatest possible number of volunteers. You can be a volunteer. Get all the details from your Army and your Air Force recruiting station. Remember, you are needed now. With our star Lee Tracy in the role of Kent, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Desert Flight. <laughs> When a pilot takes off on a flight, there's a mark along his map course that stands as a warning to him. Should it become necessary to turn back, he must do so by the time he reaches this mark. Or should he go beyond it and then attempt to return, his gas supply would be such he would fail. This mark is called the point of no return. Dakar. A tiny wart on the arid pot belly of French North Africa. Dakar, hot, dirty, full of all mixtures and blends of humanity. The southwestern oasis of the vast and terrible Sahara Desert. Come in. You can't. I could be. Who are you? And close the door. My name is Saunders. Tex Saunders. Hmm, from Texas, no doubt. That's right. You ain't two gun Saunders, the man that downed Billy the Kid. Look, bub. <laughs> Take it easy, Tex. Pull up a glass. Pardon me if I don't get up. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Ah, say when. Fine. Well, cheers. Are you the guy who was asking for me at the airport? Your flight's to anywhere, yeah. That's me. <laughs> well, where do you want to go? The moon? Casablanca will do fine. Casa, huh? Sure, I'll take you there. How much? She'll be my wife. Francs or dollars? Either way. Dollars. Good old green stuff. How much? Two hundred apiece. That's robbery. All depends on how bad you want to get to Casa. Think it's robbery? Take the airline. All right, all right. When can we leave? I don't know. Another party left word they'd call and have to see what they want. Might as well take along as many as I can. Look, I want to get to Casablanca, and I want to get there fast. So if you can't do the job right now, I'll go elsewhere. Well, why don't you do that? I don't like to be rushed. It's bad for my nerves. Of course, with this wind blowing up some pretty nasty sandstorms along the route, you might find the airline wouldn't want to be rushed, too. Independent cuss, aren't you? Yeah, sort of. Call me as soon as you can go. I'd be glad to. Where do I call? We're in this so-called hotel, too. Room 23. Okay, Tex. When I know, you'll know. And listen, fella. Word of brotherly advice. Yeah? The only guy I ever knew who was always looking over his shoulder the way you do was a guy who didn't want to be caught. Only one day he did get caught. You know why? You tell me. Because one day the wrong person saw him looking over his shoulder and got suspicious. My good man, may I sit down? Huh? Yeah. Oh, sure. Squat. Yeah. Here's my card. Cecil A. Parker, the third. That's right. My wife is seated over at the corner table. We're on a tour of the African and Mediterranean countries. Right now we'd like to leave here and go to Casablanca. This Sirocco bothers my wife. I understand you fly people anywhere. I'd like to hire you and your plane for an indefinite period. I'll pay you well. What's the matter with the regular airline? They say there's a bad sandstorm. They won't fly until it passes. Besides, we like privacy. Great place to find that. 
What makes you think I'll fly if the airline won't? Oh, I've taken the liberty to find out all about you, Mr. Kent. They say you fly in anything. Sure you want to take that chance? Nonsense. The airline has to protect its interests. They can't take any chances. Actually, I know there's very little chance involved. That's so. Hmm. You got it all figured out, huh? You ever flown in a sandstorm? What difference does that make? Will you fly us to Casablanca? Sure. The fare is 300 apiece. American. I'll pay you 200 for the both of us, and that's all. Goodbye, Mr. Parker. 300. Your wife's calling. All right, you win. You realize this is highway robbery? Cash before takeoff. Now, see here, Mr. Kent. Might be well to understand that I'm not a man without position. It might pay you well to be a bit more respectful. Only pay I want from you is $600, old pal. Take it or leave it. Uh, when can we leave? Mm, best time would be about 5 tomorrow morning. I'm not in the habit of getting up that early. We'll leave at 10. Okay by me. We'll be at the airport at that time. Good idea if you want to go to Casa. You certainly don't have any manners, do you, Mr. Kent? Nope, I certainly don't. You know what I think, Sam? I think I can guess. I think you're crazy with the Sirocco. I'll file to fly at 10,000. Should clear my head. Makes no difference at what altitude you fly. You fly by instrument. Stand thick like fog up to the very heaven. Hank, you missed your calling. You should have Mr. been... Mr. Kent, it's getting very hot sitting in that aeroplane of yours. May we please leave? Waiting for two more passengers. What? What? What do you mean? I, I, I chartered your plane to fly to Casablanca. Uh, there are to be no other passengers. Listen, Mac, you didn't charter anything. You just booked passage on my plane. If you don't like it, get off and take the regular airline. I'm certainly not going to put up with this kind of treatment. You, yes. when is the next regular flight to Casablanca? Well, I don't know, sir. All the flights have been grounded. There's been a very bad sandstorm along the way. I've land. heard all that before. What's the matter with you people? No wonder you still live like savages. Letting a little sand in the air ground you. You're just lazy, that's all. Well, it's not a little sand, sir. It's a great deal. Gets in the engines and... What? Aren't your planes equipped with some kind of filters for that sort of thing? I know I've read about them somewhere. Uh, sometimes such things just don't work. A plane that goes down in the desert is kaput. My employers do not wish to take such a chance with the lives of their passengers. Life is a very precious thing, Mr. Parker, and even here. Ah. What about your plane, Kent? It's magical. It never goes kaput. You said it. This plane is a monophique assemblage of bullshit stuff. Here we are, Kent. Let's take off. I said 10 o'clock, 10.30. Couldn't get a cab. My wife, Joan. Hiya. Hello. Well, Parker, you coming or aren't you? I have no choice. But I want you to know I don't like it. Here's your money. Thanks. I'll count it later. Let's go. See you, Hank. I hope so, Sam. I ask Lady Luck to watch over you. <laughs> Do that. Is that the plane? That's it. What kind is it? <laughs> Good question. For the lack of a better name, we'll call it a Kent. A bit of this and a bit of that. Flies like a bird. Plenty of provisions aboard? Enough. Water's about all you want. Who's the other guy? Oh, excuse me. Mr. and Mrs. Saunders, uh, meet Mr. Parker. Hey. How do you do? How charming. Climb aboard, folks. Take any seat you want, but mine. Yeah. Mr. Kent, I beg your pardon. Huh? I wonder, do you have room for one more? Yeah, I guess so. Where did you pop from all of a sudden? I'd appreciate it greatly if you'd take me with you, but I'm afraid I can't pay very much. No, you don't have that prosperous look. How much can you pay? This is all I have. According to the rates I charge, you got about enough there to hitch a ride out to the runway. Say, uh, uh, haven't I seen you someplace before? It's possible. I've been many places. What's your name? Does it matter? No, I guess not. You know, I don't know why I'm doing this. Never done it before. Keep your money and climb aboard. You can sit up in the cockpit with me. Thank you, Mr. Kent. Don't thank me. I'll probably hate myself when I stop to think about it. Dear, do you suppose you 
suppose I, I could have a drink of water. Don't tell me you have another one of your infernal headaches. No, I'm just thirsty. I don't know why I agreed to come on this trip anyway. Dirty, filthy countries. And look out there. Might as well be flying in another world. You can't see a thing. Oh, I think it's rather exciting, darling. That Mr. Kent looks just like a pirate. Don't worry, he is. Emily, I have half a mind to book passage on the first boat out of Casablanca. Would you mind getting me that drink, Cecil? Ah, if I weren't a gentleman, I'd let you get it yourself. Honey, honey. Yeah? Wake up a minute, will you? Uh, before. Do you think we really gave him the slip? Stop worrying. Who's that guy up there with the driver? I don't know. He looks like a bum, and yet he doesn't. I have a feeling I've seen him someplace before. You don't think he's a copper. We'll know the answer to that when we land at Casa. Yeah. If he is, that's just too bad for him. It's not just a piece of machinery to you, is it? Huh? Huh? Oh! <laughs> Baby here, you mean? No. No, she's no piece of machinery. She's got a heart, big heart. Your heart, Mr. Kent. What do you mean, mine? It's all her own. Where is it located? Somewhere between the ends of her wings, tip of her tail, and the point of her nose. Sand is very thick, like a great curtain of red fog. Yeah, kind of messy. What are you, on the bum? Not exactly. Okay, it's none of my business. Just suppose I'd refuse to take you to Casa for free. I would have thanked you and found another way. What other way? There's another way to everything, Mr. Kent. I wonder yes, if... I can't get the plug out of the water bag. My wife would like a drink. Well, ask Saunders to do I it. I certainly will not. Do you want to fly this while I do it? I'll take care of it. Fine. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Here comes trouble. What is it? What is it? What's going on? Get back What's in your seat. On? We're going down, aren't we? Get out of here. Come well, along, Mr. Parker. Mr. Kent can't be disturbed now. Everything is going to be all right. Get everyone in their seat with their safety belts on. Trouble, Kent? Plenty. Got one engine nearly out, and the other one not far behind. Anything I can do? Yeah. Sit down. Help keep the others quiet. Right. The car. The car. This is 6184. 6184. Come in, please. I'm not receiving you. I'll take that, Mr. Kent. You fly the plane. You know how to work it? I think so. That car, that car, this is 6184, 6184. They may be getting us. Tell them I'm heading back. Estimate my position 100 miles north of Chinguetti. Tell them... Tell them we're going down. Both engines dead. That car, that car, this is 6184, 6184, going down. That's the car. Tracy, starring as Kent in the proudly we hail production of Desert Flight, will return for the second act in just a moment. But first, an important message to the young men of America. Estimate our position, vital word for the safety of Kent and his passengers, and so vital for the safety of our country. The United States Air Force is building up for that purpose, and you can help right now. If you have the necessary physical and educational qualifications, you can join the aviation cadets for pilot or navigator training. Winning your silver wings will mean that you will fly in the United States Air Force and serve your country in these critical times. So, estimate your position, for you are needed now. Your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station will give you all the details. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Kent, we present the second act of Desert Flight. The desert is an all-engulfing sea of treachery. Its shifting sands, its bone-hard wastes, its ugly mountains, bare and fevered, are stamped with a hideous sameness to those lost within its seemingly endless boundaries. By day, a burning, shimmering void that sucks life dry. By night, a frigid hell. 
When there is a windstorm, the sterile air grows muddy, filled with a thick haze of vicious, biting sand particles that choke and sear. How <coughs> are uh, you feeling, Tex? Not bad. If I lie still, that friend of yours <coughs> picked me up fine. <coughs> Here's a drink. Got to go careful with the water, my boy. Guess our chances aren't so hot, are they? Don't talk like that. We'll know better in the morning. Sorry there aren't any more blankets to go around. How are you doing, Miss Saunders? Oh, I'm okay, but couldn't you give him a drink? <coughs> I'm freezing and choking to death at the same time. Relax, this we all are. This is all your fault if you hadn't been in such a hurry. Parker, too. I've had a busy day. Yeah. Better go take care of your wife. Yeah. Oh, thank you, lucky stars. You're still in one piece. <coughs> Not many pilots could have set this thing down the way. Kent did. He did such a fine job. My wife has a broken arm, and look at you with your ribs all caved in. Go away, you nasty little jerk. Stop moving if I oh, had to. Let to be still. Oh, so now you're against me too, eh? No one is against you, uh, But can't you see complaining isn't going to help? Nothing is going to help now. It could be worse, you know. We're uh, out of the storm here in the plane. What good is that? <coughs> we can't move. We're trapped. Any luck with the radio? I'm afraid not. Well, there's nothing much we can do now. Try and get some sleep. Most important thing to remember is that we got to go easy on the water. Don't know how long we'll be here. We got to make it last. There's plenty if we ration it carefully. Now, as far as the food goes, I want you to. Cecil, where are you going? I'm going to get us a drink. I don't want one. Mr. Kent said the water had to be rationed. I don't care what he said. So you touch that water and I'll call Mr. Kent. You will what? Yes, I will. My wife. <laughs> Good night, Cecil. Looks like today isn't our day to move. Isn't there anything we can do? He's getting worse. Two whole days like this. <coughs> I've got to have more water. I can't stand this heat. I'm burning up. You're a good kid, Joni. Sorry it had to be like this. I've been praying for four days that the storm would let up. Maybe the wind will blow forever. The way I figure it, we got water for about three more days. The wind has stopped. Huh? What? Blow out? Come on! Wake up, everybody! The wind has stopped! Come on, let's get a fire built while it's still dark. They'll be out looking for us. Hello, Tex. Guess I was asleep. Where's Joni? We made a tent out of a parachute. It's cooler than it is in here. I thought you needed a rest. I'm sorry we can't move you out there, too. I must be delirious. I keep getting you mixed up with somebody else, only I don't know who. I keep figuring you know all about it. Why don't we just pretend that I do? He was a rat. Deserved to die. Wasn't Joni's fault. Oh, mine. I did it. Don't want any harm. Come to her. Cops looking for his boat. Take care of Joni. Not really my wife, you know. Too late now. No harm will come to her. Tell Kent. Gotta see him for a minute. No need. Joni didn't know I'm cashing in my chips. After Kent, you come back. Wanna talk to you? Gotta talk to you. I'll be here, Tex. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you call me? Why? You felt it would be better, Joan, if you weren't there. I loved him. I loved him. He was he was the only guy I ever loved. The only one who ever treated me decent. No, he's dead. Dead. Would you like to say a prayer for him? A prayer? Yes. We'll say one for him together. Yes. Yes, I do want to say a prayer for him. I want God to give him a break that nobody else ever did. Do you think he will? We'll ask him. You and I. Another day just about shot. No planes looking for us. No nothing. Guess there's only one thing left to do. What's that? When it gets dark, I'll hit the road. Can't be much more than 50 miles from Cinguetti. If I miss that, maybe I'll hit a tail. 
travel only at night, hold up during the day. 50 miles or 10 is too much for you now. Got to take a chance. Women can't last much longer, especially Mrs. Parker. Have you noticed her arm? There's a woman. Hasn't let out a peep since it happened. Got more courage than all of us put together. When I go, you take charge. Watch Parker. I think he's tracking fast. Another day and he'll be off his rocker for good. Are you sure you're not going out into the desert so what water is left will last longer? Ha! Oh, don't suspect me of anything so noble. <laughs> you know, I haven't had a chance to tell you that Although I'm sorry I got you into this mess, I'm mighty glad I brought you along. You're a good man to have around in a pinch. If we ever get out of this mess, maybe I can give you a hand. If we don't, we'll... Well, let's pour some more oil on the fire. Mr. Kent! Mr. Kent, come quickly, hurry! Come on! Oh, Mr. Kent, before I knew what he was doing, he grabbed the water bag and ran out there. He's taking it off. Parker, come back here! Come back here, you fool! Look at him. He's drinking it. He's drinking the whole thing. Oh, God, Kent. Oh, God. And I'm going to. Going to Casablanca. Take care of my dear wife. Ha, 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 I'll go out after him. No. He'll never catch me. This is so too much for him. Now we have no water. <laughs> Maybe I'll see Tex sooner than I thought. <laughs> yes, no, 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 yes. Now, that's not going to help anyone, you know. Now, I was afraid on. something like this might happen. I hid two canteens of water in a cockpit. You girls take it easy. I'm sorry, Mrs. Parker. I'll go look for him if you say so. No. No, Mr. Kent, it wouldn't be any good. Wake me in an hour. No need to tell the women until tomorrow. I'll try and head just a little west to south. Then, if I miss Kingetti, I'll hit a tail, maybe. As long as it stays clear, I can follow the stars. Good night. Good night. Sleep well. Mr. Kent, Mr. Kent, wake up. Huh? What? 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 Your friend, he's gone. What? What the... He's, he's gone. Yes, I, I heard him leave, but I thought he was just going out to build up the fire. But oh, when I got up, I found this note by the door. Let me see it. Have faith and fear not. Now, what the... Oh, I should have known he'd have done it. Well, Joan, let's see how Miss Parker is. He's a strange kind of man. Did you ever notice his eyes? He wasn't like other men. I wish I knew where I'd seen him before. Well, girls, I hate to say it, but we've just about finished it. Not enough water to wet the end of your tongue. Huh? I'm sorry. Oh, well, it's your fault. You're a good man, Mr. Kent. I only wish Cecil... Uh, I don't really care. <coughs> the thirst is driving me out of my mind. I, I need a big mirage. A whole line of cattle coming down that hill. Yes, I see them too. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Where? Oh, yeah. But, but, if, if we all see them. But, hey! Hey! Over here! In this, this way! They're real. They're coming for us. Mrs. Parker, I, I'm going to kiss you and die happy. How are you feeling, Sam? <laughs> like a new man. How are the girls? Oh, they'll make it. Mrs. Parker has a bad arm, but she'll come through all right. It's mighty close, wasn't it? Yeah. How'd those birds ever find us? They see the fires? Well, that's the screwy thing about it. They told some wild tale about a man walking in and out of the night and telling them where you were. What? Why, that was... Where is he? Oh, that part is even screwier. Well, they were all a bunch of storytellers anyhow. They said he didn't stay. After he told them, he left again. Went right back into the night and the desert. A lot of poppycock. They must have seen your fire. But Hank, the... 
there was another man with us, and, and he did go looking for help. Just a coincidence, my boy. Ah, you know how those babies like to spin a yarn. They said he wasn't really a man, some kind of a spirit or something. It must have been him. Couldn't have been Sam. Poor beggar must have died out there. Who was he, anyway? Before Saunders died, he told me he thought he knew. Because we both figured we'd seen him someplace before. Saunders wouldn't tell me. And if I told you now who I thought he was, you not only wouldn't let me out of this hospital, you'd have me thrown in the nut house. Besides, well, let's just say he was a friend who, for some reason, came along for the ride. A most intriguing story, Lee. The combination of the strange cargo of passengers, romance and mystery in Dakar, and the man made quite a story. Thank you, Ken. I hope our audience enjoyed it as much as I did playing the role of Kent. Lee Tracy will return with a word about next week's show. But first, I'd like to tell the young men and women listening how they can help keep the peace of the world. You're right. It's a big job. But if everyone helps, it can be done. You can help by enlisting in the United States Air Force. And you can help yourself, too, because in the Air Force, you can really get ahead. The Air Force will train you in specialties where you can make real progress. Specialties like radar, radio, weather, aircraft maintenance, and many others. So don't delay. Serve your country and yourself in the United States Air Force. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Be a volunteer today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Supporting Mr. Tracy in the cast were Bill Lipton, George Clark, Jack Jason, Helen Christian, Joe DeSantis, and Miriam Wolf. Desert Fight was written by DeWitt Cop. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarneri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Next week, we board the world-famous Simplon Orient Express for a suspense-filled train ride across Europe. Mystery, intrigue, and death. We hope you'll be listening. Goodbye. <laughs>